Hi everybody, it's here with the birds back with another Shadowlands video. And in this video, I'm going to be testing Rule of Law and Holy Light used alongside Beacon of Virtue. In fact, in this Plague uh, Fall dungeon, I exclusively, as much as I possibly could, cast Holy Light, pairing it together with Beacon of Virtue to top off the group. And I chose to do this mostly to test out kind of the ranged version of Holy Paladin, just in the very basic throughput of Holy Light. Now obviously this is just a heroic dungeon, and my goal here is not to suggest that we should not use any of our other tools, like Shock or our Word of Glory spells, but I wanted to showcase for you just how powerful Holy Light is all by itself. So we did in 160 gear, which is a little bit under geared for heroics, it's about appropriate, we did an entire dungeon casting just Holy Light and trying to top the group off with Beacon of Virtue. Now we added into this the talent Rule of Law. And the interesting thing about that talent is it extends both the range of our mastery and also the range of our spells. In a dungeon like Plaguefall, there's actually some utility here because there's certain portions where there's platforms that are very distant and cramped. So if everybody's on those platforms, big swirls of green ooze going off, it can be kind of problematic. You have to move around a lot. Rule of Law sort of extends our ability as a Holy Paladin to reach people, and you can actually reach right across the plague fall uh, pools of ooze. So you'll see here gameplay where I'm just kind of doing topping off people with Holy Light, and every time Virtue comes off cooldown, we're trying to hit everybody with it. Rule of Law also extends the reach of Beacon of Virtue. So if you're casting Beacon of Virtue on a target that's kind of separated from everybody else, Rule of Law will make it hit other targets in your party that are probably further away than you would anticipate, which is an interesting interaction. It essentially means that in a raid setting especially, you can count on, if you use Beacon of Virtue, it always hitting um, a number of targets. Though, of course, in a raid setting, you're likely to have your Beacon of Virtue hit targets anyways. One of the things that virtu makes Virtue interesting is if it can't reach targets that are injured, it will go on to targets that are already fully healed or at full health. And Rule of Law will extend the range of Beacon of Virtue searching for targets that are injured. So that's kind of an upside of using the ability. Now, why talk about a ranged paladin when it is so completely inferior in the minds of most people who talk about Paladin or theorycraft it to the melee version. And I don't want to talk at length in this video about the distinctions, but I will talk very briefly about why I think it's important to help people see different options available to your class. Melee Paladin, where you're building with Crusader Strike to get more holy power to spend it, is good. And I would also suggest playing it if you can but it's also very, very busy. It's probably one of the highest GCD specs in the game, meaning if you're not really, really active with the spec, you're not gonna get its full potential. If you mess up the combination of Crusader Strike to Holy Shock, you're also gonna lose out on some of the potential. And for a healing class to be that busy um, requires a lot of mental attention all the time, especially in high stress moments in, and say, a mythic raid encounter where people are under geared and there's problems of people dying. Your GCD choices are really significant. And I think some people find the play style of being in melee and the hectic nature of trying to bounce back and forth between holy shocks and crusader strikes, and also the, the awkwardness of building holy power in a crucial moment by pressing a, a damage ability only feels really a bit un underwhelming just as a playstyle, whether or not the throughput is excellent or not so for those of you who like glimmer and who um, think you should play only melee paladins i hear you and i agree that it's really strong and i would recommend generally speaking you try to learn the busy side of the spec which is melee glimmer but um, there are many of you who miss the older Holy Paladin style, where you're bombing people with huge Holy Lights 
from ranged. And maybe the style where you had the mastery that put bubbles on people, that kind of fun stuff. And I want to just show you in a video a slightly undergear group doing heroics. Just a basic example. I've kind of pushed it to its limit in some ways of m only casting holy lights alongside Beacon of Virtue in order to show you that it is more than viable to play at ranged. I'm using almost none of the, the other tools that I have available to me as a holy paladin. I'm not using shocks. I'm not pressing bestow faith, all of which build holy power. I'm also not using any holy power at any point in this dungeon. You can see with wings, beacon of virtue, holy light, doing tons and tons of throughput. We start to get into the point of the dungeon where I showcase a little bit of rule of law. So I'll just kind of try to talk through it as I usually do with my videos and give you a sense of what I'm thinking and how maybe this ability interacts. Is rule of law better than two cavalier charges? Probably not in most cases. But one thing that people have failed to do is sort of demo where it is useful. In PvP we know it's useful. Um, partly because you've got to sneak around corners as a holy paladin to top people off with really quick holy lights. But in PvE content, we largely ignore it. There are some interesting implications for using rule of law. One of them is that holy paladin is marked as both a melee character and also a healer. So mechanics that target melee and mechanics that target healer have a chance to proc on the holy paladin in the raid. Well, this means that if there are mechanics that could easily be cheesed by having a melee player at ranged, you could think of moments where you could make the Holy Paladin deal with those mechanics, or at least bait them out. These are things that people don't tend to think about in when they're min-maxing their characters, or thinking about their spec, or thinking about builds that could be potentially viable. And my, again, my approach here is not to say, only cast Holy Light, don't cast anything else. But what I want to show you is how easy it is to keep a group up by pressing the most minimal combination of buttons and that that should inspire you to take the this kind of a baseline kit and build something around it if you really prefer uh, a much more steady gameplay style. Something that's not so cramped on your fingers. Something that's not going to make you jump all over the place to avoid really deadly sharp melee mechanics as most of them are mostly about cleaves and sudden swirls and knockbacks in melee. Um, dodging this stuff is not easy, and I know there are quite a few of you who would prefer something that resembles a little bit more of that longer range style. You can see here on the boss, we're just picking people up, and in fact, rule of law is going to be pretty helpful because we can grab people who are heading across the different ponds, and I can sort of stay at range here and hit people who are all over the place. Notice in that clip just there, Rule of Law was grabbing everybody with Beacon. All four characters were in range of Beacon, even though they were all really far away. We'll see here, that Shaman did not get my Virtue cast because I did not have Rule of Law available. So it only hit the three members. But as soon as Rule of Law is available here, all four of those guys received Virtue. So. I just want to kind of showcase that these are interesting interactions that might be useful you, for you to know. Not so that you'd never press, press Holy Shock, but so that you see that the baseline kit offers so many good things. What do I mean by this? Well, you can imagine a gameplay style, if you wanted something like Virtue, even in a raid, where you build Holy Power, or if you did say Bestow Faith, where you build Holy Power largely by casting your Holy Light onto beacon targets to top them off and then you spend uh, on your light of dawns or your word of glories you can see a build where you are using inflorescence uh, the legendary that's going to make your infusions really good and so that your shocks every one of your shocks is likely to produce a really meaty holy light cast and then you can pair that together with something like uh, beacon of virtue or you can pair it together with your just your regular beacon of faith to pour lots of healing into your tanks. You can combine the idea of a beacon of virtue paired with rule of law that is going to maximally hit your raid encounters. So you can toss it back toward the range to a really far away while you're in melee, or you can toss it forward 
into the melee pile and know that with rule of law up it will guarantee virtue is going to hit the, the injured targets. And then finally there's an interesting interaction just with virtue and holy light by themselves which I talked about in another video. You can set yourself up to have a really fascinating combo of burst healing. If you cast bestow faith and then cast a holy light as you're finishing that holy light you smash the beacon of virtue button on somebody your holy light will splash to the beacon targets even though it was cast before virtue and your bestow light uh, bestow faith will go off in rapid succession also splashing to all the beacon targets and you still have your entire beacon of virtue window within which to cast any spells you like so you can shock you can word of glory you can light of dawn you can just free cast holy lights all of these things um, you can get maybe three casts of holy light off in about 15 percent haste gear but you have all these other tools at your disposal this doesn't even account for using things like divine toll if you'd like it or if you're doing the hammer build sitting at range and tossing your hammer in and then having both word of glory and light of none go off within a beacon of virtue window all of these things are available to you and in fact um, they offer a far more relaxed view of this build you can see I'm even kind of typing here <laughs> to people who are asking questions in our guild, getting people prepared for things. Pretty relaxed, just bombing holy lights in here, taking account of people's health. You can see here I get really tempted to press my button because there's a lot of throughput healing required for this. Um, and we don't need it. We just dump a beacon of virtue and then pick people up by casting holy lights into them. So on its own, this combination <laughs> is doing like 2.1 healing and uh, just just raw output. I think it's fascinating because we don't want to talk about a ranged Holy Paladin build, but there are a lot of reasons to offer people why there are synergies available to you if you would prefer this less cramped style. Is it going to be quite as effective as a melee build? No, I don't think so. But that's not the point. The point is, um, is, it, is the distinction between a melee holy paladin's throughput and this ranged build's throughput that far apart? I think the answer is actually not really. I mean, it remains to be seen, obviously. But people talk a lot about problems of building, building holy power from ranged, i.e. not having crusader strength. But there are a lot of ways to get around this, like using things like virtue and casting on virtue targets. You can build all kinds of holy power, shocks and bestow faith having a good return. But also just the idea that maybe holy power spenders don't have to be quite as significant. And you can be bombing really huge holy lights with conduits and inflorescence working together and pouring out all kinds of healing. Anyways, just thought I'd show you guys that build and you can ask any questions you have uh, below in the comments and I'll try to do my best to answer it. Uh, again, I'm not trying to advocate for only for a ranged build. I just want to show people a little bit more data so they can see with their own eyes what's going on. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys again next time. Bye.